Assalamu alaikum. I'm honored to present to you our study entitled Tuberculosis and Pyogenic Spondylodicides. What are the differences? I have no conflict of interest. As we all know, infection, uh, infectious spondylodicides is the infection of the intervertebral disc and it's adjacent in the plates. Based on the histologic response of the host to the specific organism, infectious spondylodicides are classified into granulomatosis, such as tuberculosis, and pyogenic, mainly Staphylococcus aureus. The differentiation between pyogenic and tuberculous spondylodicides is crucial to start an appropriate treatment. In fact, early and target management can significantly reduce mortality and morbidity, especially neurologic complications. According to American and Tunisian guidelines, unless life-threatening sepsis, empiric antibiotic therapy should not be started before attempts to isolate the pathogen. However, identification of the responsible agents is not always achieved. Indeed, previous studies showed that successful isolation of the microbial agents was possible in only about one-third of patients biopsied. Thus, awareness of clinical, biological, and imaging characteristics of each pathogen can help differentiate pyogenic from tuberculous spondylodicides. We aim to determine distinctive parameters that help differentiate tuberculosis from, from pyogenic spondylodicides. For this, we conducted a cross-sectional study in the rheumatology department of the Military Hospital of Tunes. We included patients followed for tuberculosis of, or pyogenic, pyogenic spondylodicides with a successful isolation of microbial agents. We collected demographic data, clinical manifestations such as anorexia, weight loss, fever, neurological compli complications, biological parameters including ESR, CRP, and blood count, and radiological features such as uh, basing, uh, based on MRI findings such as vertebral body and disc signal abnormalities, erosion, paravertebral abscess, epidurites, vertebral collapse, and spinal cord compression. Statistical analyses were performed using SPSS. These are our main results. We included 32 patients in tuberculosis spondylodicytes group and 21 patients in the pyogenic spondylodicytes group. As shown in this table, the mean age was higher in pyogenic spondylodicytes patients and males were, were, were most frequently affected in pyogenic spondylodicytes group. Regarding comorbidities, we did not find differences between the two groups. Now for clinical manifestation, we found that fever was more frequently, uh, fre frequently seen in a pyogenic spondylodicytes group without uh, reaching significance. However, anorexia and weight loss were more observed in tuberculosis patients. Spinal pain was more frequently acute in pyogenic spondylodicytes patients while it was chronic in uh, tuberculosis spondylodicytes patients. And diagnosis delay was higher in uh, tuberculosis spondylodicytes patients. For biological features, we found that CRP and leukocytes were higher in, significantly higher in pyogenic spondylodicytes patients. And, for, and among patients with pyogenic spondylodicytes, the pathogen entry portals were cutaneous in 33% in of cases and undetermined in 48% of cases. The isolated bacteria were gram-positive coccyx in 81% of cases, especially staphylococcus. Now regarding MRI features, all patients had disc and adjacent end plates edema, paravertebral abscess, 
uh, APD rights, vertebral collapse, and vertebral body signal abnormalities were more, more, more frequently, frequently seen in tuberculous spondylodecites patients than pyogenic spondylodecites ones without reaching significance. And the thoracic spine location were more, more frequently seen in tuberculosis spondylodecites patient. However, lumbar uh, spine uh, location was more frequently seen in pyogenic spondylodecites patients. Multi-level spinal involvement were, were more frequently observed in tuberculosis spondylodecites patients. To summarize, our patients showed that patients with tuberculosis spondylodecites, uh, spondylodecites were younger than those with pyogenic spondylodecites. Fever was more frequent in, spondyl, in pyogenic spondylodecites. However, loss of, weight, loss of weight and anorexia were common in tuberculosis spondylodecites patients. Clinical onset was acute and loud in pyogenic spondylodecites patients, but chronic and insidious in tuberculous spondylodecites patients. Regarding biomarkers, CRP and leukocytes were significantly higher in pyogenic spondylodecites patients. As, we, uh, as demonstrated by this uh, table, our findings were in line with literature data. Now let took, uh, now uh, let take a look at the MRI findings of our patients. As we can see, several signs are suggestive of tuberculosis, such as the, uh, sp the thoracic spine location, the multi-level inv spinal involvement with non-contiguous level of involvement, which must which can be explained by the subligamentous spread. Indeed, tuberculosis typically starts from the anterior cancerous bone in the vertebral body, followed by destruction of the vertebra, and the, uh, then the extension beneath anterior, uh, anterior longitudinal ligament explaining the non-contiguous involvement. Other features are suggest, uh, support the diagnosis of tuberculosis, such as the paraspinal abscess as seen in this radiograph and MRI, intravertebral abscess, the thin and smooth wall abscess, and, and mirror-like erosion as seen in this MRI. Moreover, destruction of more than 50% of vertebral body height is common in tuberculosis as, as seen in this uh, radiograph and MRI of spine. Tuberculosis is also characterized by abscess calcification and relatively preserved intervertebral disc which is due to, which can be due to a lack of proteolytic enzymes. This lack of proteolytic enzymes can also explain the preservation of the posterior longitudinal ligament. So if ab anterior epidural abscess occur, it will be characterized by its beloved uh, appearance or unilo unilobate appearance with the preservation of the posterior longitudinal ligament. However, pyogenic spondylodecites is characterized by early bone reformation, including peripheral sclerosis and osteophytosis. So, as we previously mentioned, Tuberculosis is characterized by the normal or to mild dis dis uh, destruction, the thoracic spine involvement, and multiple body involvement. It's not worthy to mention the characteristics of abscess in tuberculosis, which are which are the well defined, uh, which are well defined with thin and smooth wall and may be located intravertebrally. To conclude, the differentiation between tuberculosis and pyogenic spondylodecites is challenging since, since discovertebral biopsies are culture negative in 40 to 70% of cases.
Thus, awareness of clinical, biological, and imaging characteristics of each entity can help diagnosis and then direct antibiotic therapy. We, saw, we had so far discussed the differences between tuberculosis and pyogenic spondylodecytes. What about Brucella spondylodecytes? We'll find the answer in our poster entitled Radiological Features of Brucella spondylodecytes. Thank you for your attention.